everyone welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know I am Samantha and this is Samantha's doodle in this video I will be showing you how I made this lovely purple and gold geode painting um, it did not start out looking like this it was not actually supposed to look anything like this at all but I had a big old mishap and my resin poured off the side of my panel because it was not level so I will show you how I started this piece, the big old mess I created, and how I fixed it. So if you're interested in seeing the process for this painting, keep watching. I started with my MDF panel. Um, this one is just another one I have that is in the priming stage. Um, it's just a about a half inch thick. It's 10 inches across. I got it at a craft store. Um, you should be able to just Google MDF panels and see what you find. The resin that I used for this piece was the Counterculture DIY Artist Resin. I've been using this for all of my pieces lately. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I do use a respirator, I use a silicone mixing cup, um, and I use plastic cups that I can pull the resin out of and reuse over and over again. Um, if you want a more thorough overview into resin, resin safety, resin tips and tricks, I will link my last tutorial um, where I went into a full long explanation of what I use, why I use it. Um, and just some information that's really helpful, I think, if you're a beginner. So I will link that here for you. For the background, I used the same um, holographic Cricut foil that I used in my last holographic painting. This one was supposed to be a lot more um, like that style, but after my mishap with the resin pouring off the painting, I had to take it in a little bit of a different direction, um, but I do really love how that color shift is still visible underneath in a couple places. Um, so here I used a little bit of a lighter foil that I had on hand, um, but the main one is this dark purple. That's Luna, if you can hear her. This is Luna. She says hello. Hi, guys. She is not the biggest fan of cuddles, so I will not keep her up here for very long. But if you hear meows in the background, it is because she does not like anybody else to talk more than she does. For the um, larger stones that I used on this piece, it is these clear plastic, um, they're also called acrylic gemstones that I got from Amazon. I will link those below. Um, I found them just by searching acrylic gemstones in Amazon. It was $10 for the amount that fits in this cup. I also used these pink sparkly vase filler um, rocks, I guess, from Michaels. They're called the Ashland Spring um, Tiny Treasures Decorative Filler. So you get 20 ounces for $5, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Um, and they are, they're sparkly. So they're light pink, kind of like a pastel. Um, they came in a couple other colors. The other ones glow in the dark. I didn't buy any of those. Um, but I think I might have to go get some for future projects because that could be pretty cool. So I started this painting the same way that I started my last holographic one. Um, I didn't show it, but what I did was I traced my panel onto the holographic material and then cut um, about the same size. And then I glued it to the panel and made sure everything was dry and then started gluing my stones in the center of the panel. I wanted like a central um, focal point, like a round composition for this. Um, and it started off really nice, but you'll see in a minute what happened and why this didn't quite work out. For my purple, I mixed together the blue ice and the red strawberry from Stardust Micas with a little bit of the micro purple haze metal flake from Paint Huffer. Um, you can't really see it too well in this, but it is really, really sparkly, and I love to use this in my resin paintings um, because it just brings out that shine and the glitter look. 
and if you know me if you've been following me for a while you know how much I love glitter so finding this product was amazing also used the sterling silver just for a little bit of that silver accent that I did um, it wasn't a ton of it but it was pretty and it was also from Stardust Micas if you've watched my videos, you know how um, I go about the whole resin process. I mix my resin following the instructions, and then I mix and set aside my colors, and then I will pour everything in one big process. Um, so for this one, I started by just painting like a little circle to follow, and I did actually two different mixtures of purple um, using that Stardust Mica's pigment powder and the Metal Flake together. Um, so you can see there's that light purple around the center and then the dark purple is the next ring. I actually forgot um, to record the video of the next two colors. I used a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Um, I will link those in the description box below. I promise I will show you what materials those are. I just don't have the footage of that. Um, but I used the black to go around the outside and then I used the white to do a little bit of detailing on top of that purple just to add a little bit of dimension. And then I put it on the outside as well, just like I said, to add a little bit of detailing. And then from here, I went in with my clear resin and I filled in those sections in between the colors. Um, when I do this, it's because I want everything to kind of feather and blend out a little bit. Um, and it'll still show through to that holographic foil underneath because it is the clear resin. Um, they just won't stay in perfect rings. They'll kind of feather out a little bit and I like the way that looks and that's what I was intending for this piece. So after I did my clear, um, I decided that I wasn't fully satisfied with this as the base layer, so I poured a little bit of pink. Um, it is just that red strawberry, the same one I showed earlier, and then this is just a little bit of that blue ice mixed with the white. So this is what my first layer looked like, um, and it would have been really pretty, except as you can see, I did not have my panel totally level and it poured off the side. If you make this mistake, one of the most important things to ask yourself is whether or not anything from the painting is salvageable. I did this painting and I wanted to have a really central focused composition with the stones in the middle and then the resin poured and rings around it. And it was lopsided so it didn't cure anything like what that was supposed to look like. So even though the one side cured perfectly, it was to find sections exactly how I wanted it, the resin on the other side just poured off, leaving kind of like a translucent, weird shape in the middle, um, throwing off my entire plan for the composition. So what I decided to do was to pour another layer and add more crystals. And this way, the C shape that I was left with from the first layer would kind of work with the second layer. Um, so I expanded the crystal cluster from the middle over to the side and then added the two extra little bursts. So this is just a time lapse of me adding um, the crystals to the panel. You can see there's a little bit that I had already done um, when I was experimenting with the composition before I decided to do that one big cluster. Um, I had done this and then decided I didn't really like it. You can see that I also experimented a little bit with um, gold leaf, trying to outline those sections, see if I could make that kind of C-shape work. And I just decided that ultimately it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, so I went in with more of my gemstones and decided to just totally change the composition.
the gold that I used for detailing is this liquid gold leaf that I got on Amazon. Um, so I did a little bit, you can see like right here in between the layers and then I did my final detailing at the end where I kind of painted the crystals so they're dripping in gold um, and then outlined the additional sections with that and did a little bit of gold detail across. So I really like this as an alternative to regular gold leaf. Um, I'm still learning how to use that correctly, but I found that the liquid leaf is a lot easier. It's more intuitive. You just paint it on with a brush. It's like using a regular paint. So I would recommend trying that if you are struggling with regular gold leaf like I am, because um, I am pretty happy with how it turned out. One of the really good things about working with resin is that you can camouflage almost any mistake that you make by pouring another layer. When I poured my second layer, I preserved the parts of the first layer that I liked and I covered up the parts that I did not like and it gave me some depth where I can see through to the lower layers but also helped camouflage the fact that I screwed up and my <laughs> composition totally shifted. So this is what my painting looked like after I kind of changed around my composition. And from here, I was going to pour my second layer using primarily purple and gold. For my gold, I used the Stardust Micah's Queen's Gold Pigment Powder. It's kind of like a yellowy gold. Um, and I mixed that with sparkly gold craft glitter and a little bit of this yellow craft glitter. Um, I got the yellow one at Michael's and this came in a multi-pack on Amazon that I will link below. And I also used my Maron Gold Makeup Pigment Powder. Um, it's more of a bronze gold, but I found that when you put these two next to each other, there is a lot of depth and dimension. It makes the color richer, and I just really love how it turns out with the two colors next to each other. Um, they mix a little bit, but they don't totally blend together, if that makes sense. Um, but I like to have a little bit of the bronzier and a little bit of the yellowy or gold together. So I started my second layer by sealing in my crystals using a layer of clear resin, um, just to make sure that even though they're glued on, this way they are totally sealed in and they're not going to move or come off and the resin will lock them in place. So then I decided to go over um, 
using my opaque colors and covering up any sections that I wasn't totally satisfied with. Um, this included outlining that gold and adding just a little bit more of that sparkle and dimension on top of where I had placed my liquid gold leaf. Um, you can see that I'm not tracing it totally exactly just so that there's a little bit of depth there and you can still see the gold leaf um, kind of mixing together with the gold resin. Um, and then from here I took my purple the same way I mixed it earlier um, and added some purple lines to my um, composition to enhance that C shape. And then I decided that I really wanted to go all out with the gold. So instead of just outlining that section, I decided to make some of the gemstones totally gold themselves. Um, so I used my yellow gold and a little bit of my bronze gold to kind of make those have that metallic effect. And then from here, I decided I wanted to tint all of the clear stones with my purple resin. Um, it looks like I'm making a huge mistake, I know, but I promise you the end result was worth it. Um, what I did was I mixed my dark and my light purple together, and then I poured some clear resin on top of it to give a little bit of like a translucent quality to it. So instead of totally coating um, the stones, it, it blended out, it dripped down into the cracks there, and it just gave it a purple tint instead of being totally overwhelmingly purple. So from here I just added a few more details. Um, I used some silver and some pink and I also used my clear resin to go over those spots that I had left um, blank, I guess is the word I would use. And this way that clear resin is going to harden and you're going to be able to see all of the um, colors and that holographic foil that were underneath of it. Um, so it'll blend together and feather out, but there's still going to be some depth there you'll be able to see through to that under layer. So that's what I really love about using um, layers and the clear resin in my paintings because you can hide a lot of things with the opaque colors and then the clear allows the parts that you do love to show through. So this is what the painting looked like after the second layer dried and then from here what I did is I took some more of that liquid gold leaf and just added detail in those same spots um, really emphasizing those stones and kind of making them coated in gold and then just outlining the different sections where those um, stones are on the sides as well. So after I did the final detailing with the gold leaf, um, I took my Posca paint pens. So this is what the box looks like. Um, ignore my scribbles of testing out the colors before I use them. Um, but so I used the red and the purple in this case. Um, and I outlined these sections right here just to add a little bit of definition. I like the way this looks, a lot of artists don't. Um, just do what you like best in your geo paintings. I like that it just adds a little touch of what I think is my style. Um, so I just like to have final details so that I feel like it ties everything together and brings in some of the colors that might not be as prominent in the piece. This almost looks intentional, I think. I will say so myself. 
um, it looks like this is what I was going for from the start and I am pretty happy with how it turned out. Okay, well I have probably talked more than enough. Um, that is all that I have for you on this piece. I am really happy with how it turned out. I feel like I salvaged something that I didn't think I'd be able to fix and I'm really proud of that. Um, so thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel or just leave me a comment and let me know what kind of content you want to see in the future. I am open to trying new products, new materials, um, trying out new techniques that I haven't used, explaining things in more detail if you think I haven't gone over it enough. Just let me know what you want to see and I will work it into a future video. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.